Thank you so much for watching the Press Avenue YouTube channel. My name is John, and today we're going to talk about how to build a WordPress website from start to finish for your business. I'm going to walk you through each step from signing up for hosting for your WordPress website to also buying a domain name with our favorite service called Namecheap, and then connecting your domain name to your server or hosting. And then from there, we're going to install our most recommended plugins and also theme. And then we're going to walk you through the customizer and then how to create a home page an about page and a contact us page. We also have a full write up of each step on our website, pressavenue.com. And additionally, right below in the video description, we've highlighted some areas that you can skip ahead or skip around to or come back to um, links in the video. So you can get to how to set up my domain name to how to point my domain name to my hosting or how to use the customizer. So they're all down below. Just click those and it'll skip ahead or bring you back to where you need to be. Additionally, if this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions along, a along the way, excuse me, please leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. All right, so this is the website we'll be creating today. Um, again, it'll have your logos and your text, etc. But we'll show you resources in how to get these things from the cover image in the back here to different photographs, etc. So here we are, we have a logo and a contact us, a menu, a big sweeping hero image using a custom YouTube video. That's a commercial free YouTube video that anyone can download and use. A call to action. The menu then fades and follows us through the site. We have three services that we highlighted here. Again, it'll be for your company. And then testimonials at the bottom with a reviews page. Further in, we talk about how to create a simple about us page and then how to do a sweeping menu or excuse me, a sweeping image just like this one. And then lastly, we talk about a contact us page, what to add, how to add icons and then how to make a contact us form. All right. So now we're going to get started with buying a domain name. If you already have one, go ahead and click the links below to skip this section. All right, so Namecheap.com. Namecheap is a domain seller that we absolutely love. The name suggests everything. It's a name or a domain name, and it's cheap. Uh, the reason we use them is typically uh, domain names are between eight and nine dollars, or eight eighty-eight, and they tend to have a sale just about every single month. So if you can hold off, you can get a really good domain name on the cheap. Uh, other re reasons we like them is the renewal. So if you buy a domain name for $10 now and it renews in one year, typically with other services, it renews for more money. So if I buy it now for eight, it might renew for 15. On Namecheap, it's just flat across the board. I bought it for eight and it does go up a little bit every now and again and they seem to all go up, but they go up pennies on the dollar when other ones go up actual dollars. Uh, for example, right now, if we search for a domain name, search for, so we search for our domain name and it's available. So right now the price is $8.88 per year. Typically I've always bought them around that. Um, this says it retails for $10.98 a year. And at the time of this video, I just checked GoDaddy and they're retailing for $17.99 a year. So if you want to save $7 and a penny, um, that stuff can really add up. If you do a decade of uh, having your domain name, uh, it's about 70 bucks. If you're doing hundreds of domain names, saving $7 per domain name can really add up quickly. All right, so after we've done that, we've searched for it and it's available. Um, they also have other names that they suggest. So I can say search for unicorns.run.net.ai and then they list an absolute ton of them. Now, not all of them are 888. So dot VIP is actually 388 and it retails for 12. Um, dot design retails for 42, but it's actually 17. Um, dot travel is a lot more money, uh, 108.88. So some of these are a lot more um, and you can explore 400 plus uh, domain endings and you can search them here. So I do sales and marketing. So I can have a dot agency or a dot direct or a dot marketing all for different prices. 
um, services, gardening, cleaning, etc. So you can see all the endings here. Um, but I usually do the .coms, .co, .io, etc. All right, so one thing to point out before we buy this um, is a promo codes. So you can search around for Retail Me Not and some other places as well, but they actually have, let's see if I have it in here. Yep, promos, so Namecheap.com slash promos slash coupons, and they publish their coupons for the month directly on their site. So you're not going other places and seeing pop-ups, etc. So right now is February 1st through February 28th, 2019. They have discounted registration and transfer. So if you have a domain at GoDaddy, you can transfer it to um, Namecheap. They'll give you a year for free. You have to pay the $8. So say it, it expires September 2019. I'll transfer my domain name to Namecheap for eight bucks. They'll add another year to September 2020 um, uh, if you use these codes. So domains to go. What I get for domains to go is a dot com for eight eighty eight plus the eighteen cents I can fee. Um, they have other things like um, servers, but we recommend other people for servers and email hosting. They re I recommend other people as well. Um, so we'll copy this code. We'll go back. I didn't actually add it to my cart. So I'll add this to my cart. You get as many as you want as long as the promo um, takes it. See if this works after I've refreshed it. All right, so there it goes. Um, so search for unicorns.com. Then they add web hosting or SSLs or email or VPN or anything you want here. Um, and I don't want any of this stuff. Um, some of it's not bad, but I honestly have never used it. I just use them for domain names. So I'll go ahead and go to view cart. And you'll see here I'm registering for one year. I can choose to auto renew or not. I usually turn that on so I don't have a problem. It's 888 with an 18 cents ICANN fee and you can read all about that here. The who is guard, so the who is guard is worth bringing up. That's the privacy protection. I used to be called the wild wild west domain protection for GoDaddy. Um, and I will show you that. So go ahead to who is guard here. So basically, if you buy a domain name and you register it, your information is then public. So that's your name, your address, your home address, whatever you put in there, your phone number and your email, and you're susceptible to getting a ton of spam from that. So the WhoIsGuard kind of protects that. So it allows you, basically what it does is it shows the spammer or whoever is looking up your domain name, a fake email and a fake phone number and a fake address and it complies with the ICANN rules. Um, so if someone emails that, it then forwards it to your email and they filter out spam and other garbage, and it's absolutely free. Um, so you can go read about it on their site, but this comparative chart down here really shows what you're saving. So GoDaddy, you're spending $17.99 on the domain, an additional $7.99 on the WhoIsGuard, and getting out of this with them is so hard. Network Solutions, $9.99, Names, $4.99. One-on-one -on -one is free, um, but they don't allow certain things. And then Domain.com's $8.99. And then they allow, with the who is, personal uh, details protection, spam protection, email forwarding. So again, they forward it to directly to you. Um, you can expire some things, and then you can edit everything, and you can transfer it, and it applies to transfers. So that's quite a bit, and it's all free, and that happened sometime last year. All right, so under domain registration, um, one year is the default. I actually recommend um, renewing these for as long as you can afford. Um, so it's a small little signal to Google if it's renewed over a long period of time. If there is a deal, um, you can save some money here. Um, so I can put in my promo code. I think it already is on the deal. Yeah, so I'm not... Um, requires you to be logged in to apply it. So I have to log in first to apply the code, and that's fine, I can log in. Uh, who is Guard? It's free, it's automatically on, so I just leave that on to auto renew. Premium DNS, entirely up to you if, you if you need it. Most people don't, so I just leave this switched off. 
All right, so I went ahead and logged in. I cut past it because I have a password manager and you can see a whole bunch of stuff that's otherwise private. But it says the coupon code is applied and I think it was automatically applied because I don't believe this has changed. So the coupon price is just across the board. Sometimes it does go down. I've gotten domains for 88 cents. Um, so um, that is there. All right, so now, now after we're here, we have 888 plus 18. We go to confirm order. And then we review the order. So you can see the steps here. So review the order. We're buying searchforunicorns.com for one year. Um, we get the Whois subscription for free. And that's our total there. Then go ahead and hit pay now. And it'll bring you to the dashboard. All right, so here we are in the dashboard. The invoicing stuff page I just skipped, um, but it'll bring you in here and it'll show you a list of domain names that you own. So currently mine will look different because it's the domain names that I own. Um, and then they have some notices at the top here. I usually just close them, but they do offer G Suite for business, um, which I actually do recommend for email. And they'll give you a credit if you sign up for it. Um, so close that. Um, so these are domain names that I have. On the left hand side is the dashboard, which is where we are. Next one down shows you what's expired, your domain list, your product list. So if you bought an SSL or you bought VPN or any of those added services, they'll be in this list. Apps as well. So they got things like Google uh, Analytics, etc. And then your profile. And across the top is just the menu that the public sees when you're not logged in. So you can transfer a domain, go to their marketplace, look at WordPress stuff, security, etc. Um, so what we're gonna do is come down here. Block editor course is a domain we recently bought. Um, so we'll go through and edit that. Products, it shows that it has the who is guard active. You can also click this arrow to see more stuff. So it's active, I can auto renew. Um, so it says you need to turn on auto renew for the domain name for the auto renew who is guard to work, which makes sense. And then this auto renews December 6, 2019, and I can go ahead and add years here. Um, so this just shows the recent activity on the account. I can go and view all domains, but now we're gonna set up this name cheap domain name with our SiteGround hosting. All right, in this how-to video, we're gonna walk you through the signup process for SiteGround. So go ahead and click that link in the post and it'll bring you to a page like this. The background may look different. It has changed over time from tan to now blue and blue and purple. Either way, we're on the manage WordPress hosting. Manage means they take care of a lot of the server details and you don't have to worry all about that back end and more technical stuff, which is, which is what we love about SiteGround. All right, we have three options. Startup, um, great for if you have one site. And then if you hover over the essential features, it shows you other things like WordPress auto update, 24 seven support, etc. But the grow big is their best seller. Um, if you're gonna have more than one website, I do recommend this. On the startup, you can only have one. On the grow big, you can have as many as your resources will allow. Um, you can't do 100 sites, but if you had a handful, maybe even five to 10, that'd be just fine. And then this one comes with premium WordPress features, like a free transfer, priority support, a super cacher, which speeds things up in the WordPress site itself, and then free restores, which means when you back up the site, if you need to bring it back from a backup, just a couple clicks and you can do that. Then finally, the Go Geek is kind of their higher end uh, one, which allows for unlimited websites. And on this one, we've had, I believe, 42 sites on one Go Geek plan. So you can really kind of crank this server and get a lot of stuff on it. Then it comes with more geeky stuff with staging. Staging allows you to have an additional site to test stuff and stage your content. And then um, you can do that with your site. So go ahead and choose a plan. I'm gonna do get or grow big. Now that we've chosen a plan, step two is to choose a domain or state that you already have a domain. So you can either register a new domain name here by entering it and then choosing the ending that you would like. Um, and I have another link tutorial in the blog post that'll show you how to save some money with a service called Namecheap when registering a new domain name. So I'm gonna click, I already have a domain name, so I'll do the domain name I'm using right now. 
pressavenue.com. So you just put in your domain name, .net, .org, doesn't matter, and go ahead and hit proceed. It'll take you to step three, which is the details of the whole thing. So you enter in your email address and the password that you want on the account. If you already have a SiteGround account, you go ahead and log in with this link here. Further down, it says client information. You put in your country, first and last name, company if you're using one, city, street, zip, phone. Then your payment information goes here. And then you check if the billing address is the same. Purchase information, instead of going back, if you want to change your plan, you click the little refresh here and it gives you a drop down. So you can change that there and it changes the price and the features that are added. Um, period, so the hosting price listed is for the first period. Um, so you can choose, I want to do a trial. I want to lock this rate in for 24 months or 36 months. So whatever your budget allows for, I'd always shoot for the highest. Then you get that kind of cheaper rate uh, going forward. And further down, um, the Grow Big plan and the Go Geek plan allow for free file transfer. If you go down to the startup plan, um, that disappears. And lastly, the site ground scanner. I don't think you really need this. There are plugins like Security and iTheme Security that really help out for this. Um, so I don't really feel like you need this. Finally, you confirm their terms and you can click and read them and privacy policy. And lastly, you can sign up for SiteGround News, which is actually pretty good. And then you go ahead and hit pay now. All right, lastly, it'll kick you into the control panel, which is this right here. And what I love about SiteGround is your site is ready right now. With some other hosts like HostGator or Bluehost, you may have to wait between two hours to up to two days, but right now it's ready to go. Yours may look slightly different depending on the special offers and different news that they have. But if you have any questions, please do let us know. All right, now that SiteGround is here, we're gonna then set up our domain name to point to SiteGround. So go ahead and go to namecheap.com and sign in. So go ahead, whoops. We'll just go to manage, which opens up the manage page here because we'll come back to that page. Under the manage page, again, the dates will be different for you. Um, and then the who is guard protections on premium DNS. You can read all about that here. Um, if you want premium DNS, you can save money and do it with Cloudflare for free. Um, so that's just another thing you can do name server. So this is what we're looking for. So right now we just have the basic name cheap servers, which allow you to forward your domain and stuff like that. But we're actually going to do custom DNS. So you want to set that to custom. You see that? Then we're going to head over to SiteGround. So here we are at SiteGround. We're going to go to login. We're going to log in. So I have a password manager. I'm going to sign in to SiteGround. Close all the notices. And it brings us to the dashboard. We have new features at the top here, and this just kind of scrolls through. So they have new backup stuff. They have new auto updates and free automated WordPress transfers. That's great. Um, we're going to click over to my accounts. And then this shows just all about your accounts. So I actually have a grow big account. Um, and then it expires March 8th, 2020. And I've had it since 2014. That's pretty good. Um, so I do know a little bit about this and I have used it and I swear by it. I think it's really great. Um, there's information and settings. It shows installations. It shows extra services, but what we really want is the information and settings page here. So my primary domain is different. will be different from yours. Account DNS. So ns1.siteground184.com. It actually stands for name server one. And then the next one's name server two. So what, it, what we're looking for is this NS one. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, go back to Namecheap and paste. And then I'll go back to SiteGround and I'm going to copy this, go back to my domain name and paste. And then make sure there's no spaces here. And then there's a check mark. It's kind of small. I wish it was bigger or an X to cancel it out. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. 
So I'll give it a second. So it says like everything, DNS server updates take up to 48 hours to take effect. Typically this is five minutes, sometimes it's 15. And I have seen some go a day, but it's been a, quite a while. Please allow for our system 75 seconds before switching your name server again. Um, so what we've done is we're pointing the domain name and everything about it to SiteGround. So if you need to manage things like email or anything like that, it's in SiteGround. Um, other things that are on here is you can redirect your domain name, you can redirect your email, but you need to use the Namecheap domain or DNS server. You can have private email and then your domain contacts, and there's mine below blurred out. Um, products, I'll just walk you through this. If you bought additional products for that domain name, they're here. If you ever need to transfer your do domain name or share access to this, um, so if you have a web developer or a neighbor or whatever, you can put them in here. If you need to transfer out, this is where you unlock and get the authentication code. And lastly, at the advanced DNS, there won't, there won't be anything here um, because our DNS is now pointed at SiteGround. All right, so if we go over to SiteGround, so we've added that in and now we need to go to cPanel. So it brings us to a kind of a custom flavor of their cPanel. So here we are. And now we're gonna go to add on domains. So we're basically adding a domain onto our current um, service. So block editor course.com. I want the subfolder to be just the name of the site. The root, it automatically puts it in. Password, I always generate one with the password generator that I have. Copy, paste paste, or I guess they have a password generator right here. And then you certify that you've copied it. Oh, I see. Um, and then we'll go ahead and go to add domain. So that's just my password manager asked me if I want to save the password. Um, so now it says on add on domains, the add on domain block editor course.com has been created. If you wish to manage this domain's files, you can go to the file manager here or there's an FTP account that's also been created. So I'll go back and I can see it right there. And then we'll see if it works. Might need to give it a minute. All right, so after typing in the domain name, you'll see a forbidden error, which is scary for a lot of users because nobody knows what this is. And what it really is, is there's nothing on the site. So the domain name works. So I went to my domain name here and there's just nothing there. So what we need to do now is install WordPress. So we're gonna go back to cPanel. All right, so we're back here on cPanel and you'll see if you scroll down just a little bit, if these aren't open, um, you can open them as well or close them. Um, but right here it says WordPress under the auto installer. So that's what we want. Um, you can do this manually if you know how to do it. You go through FTP, you download WordPress from wordpress.org and unzip it and you upload it via FTP and then you access the install. But honestly, this way is so fast with a few clicks and you can set things up really easily. So what we're gonna go do is click install and then it kind of walks us through it. So choose a protocol, uh, we'll do HTTP. We will change to S, but I'll show you how to do that change in a little bit. Uh, choose the domain name, so block editor course is what we want. Uh, choose a directory. Um, so I usually just leave it blank because I want it at the top level. So to install only at my domain, leave empty. Next, I'm going to name it. So this is what this site really is. It's not set up yet. All right, so admin details. So you put in your admin name and a password. I'll just double that up. You put in an email address. Uh, you select your language. And then you can select plugins that are automatically installed. So limit login attempts. What this does is if a robot tries to log into your account 10 times in one second, it blocks them automatically. So that's what that plugin does. You can turn it on here and it'll automatically install it for you so you don't have to later go get it. Uh, the classic editor. So if you're not a fan of the block editor or you want to use the classic editor, 
Um, you can install it here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I do like both and use both, um, but I do like the classic editor installed, so I have a choice on which version to use. And lastly, WP Central allows you to manage multiple WordPress sites. I've actually never even heard of it, um, so I'm going to turn that off. And then finally, Easy Setup WP Starter is an easy setup of a selection of themes and plugins that they recommend. And honestly, I like my own plugins, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Finally, under Advanced Options, you can rename the database. So instead of WP590, usually I name it something that is similar to the domain name. So I don't spell out the entire domain name. So in my particular case, this is the block editor course. So I would actually name it BEC. You can do a number if you want. Um, but when I go into the database, I can see all these different naming instances like this, and I know which one is which, so I don't mess it up in the future. Table prefix, again, you can change it. The one it usually comes with is WP underscore, so it's already added that, and I leave that there. And then backup location, you can choose default or local folder. I usually leave it on default, and I click install. So now what it's doing is it's putting the files into the block editor course directory um, by downloading them, unpacking them, and putting them in. So now it says, congratulations, the software was successfully installed. You can access your WordPress site here. So we'll go ahead and click that and see if it works. It worked. If you're not familiar, this is the 2019 theme. It's very stripped down. But before I left it open, we had this error. And now we have WordPress. So if I were to refresh this, there it is. And then finally, the administrative URL, blockeditorcourse.com slash WP admin. So this is the full on WordPress as you'd like to see it and it puts me right into it, which is fantastic. All right, so the next step I usually do is secure the site with an SSL certificate. So right now, when I go to the site, it says not secure. Um, I think it's easier done when right when you create the site. Um, if you do it later, you then have to correct all the problems you've had over the course of adding images and other things that are not secure. So I like to add it right away. So I'll go back to cPanel. We're still on the um, WordPress installer, so we're going to click the CP, which will bring us back to the cPanel homepage. Then we're going to scroll down to Let's Encrypt. So it says Let's Encrypt right here. Let's Encrypt is a service that allows us to get an SSL certificate for free um, instead of having to buy one. So we're going to come down here. We already have a couple installed, and that's fine. It says Install a new Let's Encrypt certificate. So under the domain blockeditorcourse.com. Uh, the first one is a regular Let's Encrypt certificate. The second one is a wildcard. So wildcard is um, just like a wildcard in a poker game. Um, it can be anything. So if I wanted a wildcard for block editor course, I could have the wildcard for subdomains. So maybe I had myaccount.blockeditorcourse.com. Or maybe I had landingpage.blockeditorcourse.com the wildcard would cover those subdomains. But I'm going to stick with the regular one. I'm going to go ahead and click Install. And then that's really it. It says Let's Encrypt Certificate added successfully to the installation queue. So we do have to wait a second or more. So that's installed. Next, we're going to go to cPanel Home. And then other things that are in here that we really like is the Super Cacher. So under the Super Cacher, you get um, caching. So they have up here, it can make your site four times faster. Um, it can cache at multiple levels. It can optimize things. Um, so right now it's on, just to show you. If it's off, you just switch over the button and it turns it on. Dynamic cache. Um, so it explains what it's here. It's a second layer of performance to optimize your site. Um, you need a plugin on the site to do so. So if you try to turn this on, um, maybe it adds the plugin, we'll see. So I'll go back here to my WordPress website, go to plugins, and there's the SG optimizer. So SiteGround optimizer is already installed. And on the bottom left, you can see where that is. So for the best performance of your WordPress site, leave this on. And we'll go through the caching here. 
Um, usually everything they recommend is great right out of the gate. They've made it so 99.9% .9 of the users can use this. So I'll leave that all on. If you have a shopping cart or donations plugin or a form that takes money, I would exclude it here. So exclude the URL. Um, so say I had blockeditorcourse.com slash donate. So it's a, either a PayPal button or a form. I would put in the donate here and I would exclude that page. So you can see it right there from the caching. So the rest of the site will cache and this one won't. And then there's other settings here, how you can set up the environment. Um, the reason I like SiteGround is they're already running PHP 7.1. If you're running PHP 5.1, 2, 5.6, etc., you really do need to upgrade. There's a huge performance bonus and the security is a lot better. So they're already running this, so you don't need to worry about it. You can go to the bleeding edge 7.3 by clicking here and clicking switch. Now keep in mind that some older plugins do not work with this stuff. So you do want to test it before beforehand. Next, front end optimizations. You can minify. That means take all the spaces out of your code and make it really small um, so it can load faster. I do typically turn these on, but after I develop the site, then I turn all this stuff on so I can make things go faster. And then lastly, image optimization. You can optimize images in your library, which is incredible. Um, there are services that do this. There's plugins, um, EWWW, um, Optimizely, etc., that do this kind of thing for money. So I think it's great that they do this. Um, so that's the site ground plugin. All right, so now that we're cached, we have an SSL and we're ready to check if it's actually working. So right now it says not secure. I'm simply going to come up here, type HTTPS, too many T's, click enter, and it is secure now. So you can see that little lock. If I go to the front of the site as well. So it shows the little lock there and it says connection is secure. So this is in Chrome, it used to show as green, now it shows as gray. Firefox is slightly different. Uh, Internet Explorer, Safari, Edge, they all show this a little differently. But the lock here now shows that this site is secure. When you switch between HTTP and HTTPS, it kicks you out, so you need to re-log in. So that was my password manager, otherwise I wouldn't be able to remember what I'm doing. All right, so now we're re-logged in, and you can see here HTTPS. So one thing I want to point out is if we go to the settings, um, when we initially set up WordPress, we said we wanted as HTTP. Uh, the reason I did that is I just wanted to show this change here because um, some people have sites already created and they want to go back. Um, so here it is here under the WordPress address. It says HTTP. I'm going to add an S. And under the site URL, I'm going to add an S. So I'll come down here and hit save. It throws me out one more time because of the change. I'll log back in. Now you see here the address, URL address, HTTPS, and the site address. So now it is completely secure. All right, now that the site is all secure and set up with a WordPress install, we're gonna start going through WordPress itself, installing some plugins and some themes, and building our WordPress business website. So first we'll go back to the blog post, and we have a special link for buying Beaver Builder Pro that supports this channel and site. So when I click it, it brings us to Beaver Builder's website. Um, right here it says, it's been trusted by 50,000 WordPress websites. I believe it, it's really easy to use and that's why we're showing you how to do it. Next, we're going to click get it now, which brings us to the pricing page. They have three price points, um, which makes things a little easier. A standard, a pro, and an agency. The standard for 99 lets you use it for unlimited sites. It gives you the page building plugin, which is what we want. We want to drag and drop. We don't want to use any code, and we want a what you see is what you get editor, which really makes WordPress shine. Uh, their support is incredible. Um, I love plugins that have great support, so they can help you out even further. And if you have any questions, we'd love to answer them as well, and you can just leave them in the comments. Uh, it comes with the premium modules. You can test the light version out, but this comes with the premium modules, which you truly need for a business site. Doesn't come with a theme and isn't multi-site capable. That's why we always recommend the Pro. It's 100 more. It gets you the Beaver Builder theme, 
which truly lets you customize that header and footer and really change things up. And then lastly, if you're doing this for a job or client sites, etc., I do recommend the agency because it allows you to white label it. Um, so instead of saying Beaver Builder, you can say your company's page builder. So it's actually really is fantastic, the white labeling. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click Get Started under the Pro. Um, I already have it added to my cart. Um, and then one other thing to mention is the Themer plugin. So what the Themer allows you to do is if you go to the top of their page, let me start over. They have a bar across the top that says Use Themer. This allows you to use hooks and different parts of WordPress without ever learning code. Um, so what it is, is you simply fill out a form. So if you want to change the WordPress archive, you want to change WooCommerce and how product pages look. So a single product page, if you want to change it with Beaver Builder's drag and drop, this is the plugin for you. Um, if you want to change the events calendar, if you want to change easy digital downloads, so these are all other services. If you haven't heard of any of them or if you have questions, do let me know. But just to show you what Themer can do is, so theme templates, a 404. If somebody types a link, yourdomain.com slash a page that doesn't exist, it gives a 404 warning error page. With Themer, you can drag and drop new layouts exclusively for that 404 error and really clean things up. So you can have a search box, you can recommend blog posts, etc. Typically with WordPress, you would have to hand code all that, and it's just not ideal for most people. Theme parts, if you want a bar across the top or at the bottom or a custom footer only on certain pages, Beaver Builder Themer allows you to do that. Field connections, you can create custom fields which allow you to um, put in different sections. For example, if you were selling real estate, you could have a field for how much uh, the house is. You could have a field for how many bedrooms, how many baths. And Themer allows you to customize that. So you can read more about here. And we'll put a video in the description that talks all about Themer. But I actually do really like it. But it has an additional price back tag of $147. And you click Get Themer Now. It puts it into your cart, which I've already done. Um, and then you go ahead and purchase, pur purchase it. Excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, all right, so we skip through the checkout process and it kicks us into the My Account page. So here we are in Beaver Builder's website and we're logged into My Account. Under My Account, this is where you download the products that you have and you'll see them here. Your license key will actually be here, but I've hidden it uh, so nobody copies it and uses it. And then, so here I have the agency plugin. The agency plugin, the pro plugin, and the standard plugin are actually the exact same. All the agency does is allow you to white label it. The standard's exactly the same. You just can't white label it. It just says Beaver Builder, which honestly, I actually leave that Beaver Builder name on uh, most of the time anyway. So just go ahead and click this, and it downloads the plugin. So you can see it downloading down there. We're going to need the Beaver Builder theme. So I'll go ahead and click that. We're also going to need the Beaver Builder child theme. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And lastly, I'm going to add the Beaver Themer. So four things downloaded all from that. The Beaver Builder theme is the parent theme, and the Beaver Builder child theme is the child of that parent theme. And I'll get more into that. You can also do past releases if you want for some reason. Uh, further down, it shows you how many domains you have this installed on. So I have this installed on 120 domains, which is pretty good. And then it shows you your subscriptions. So I renew in a little bit this year, then your payment methods, then that's it. Additionally, under account, you can get support. Um, they have a knowledge base. They have a change log, which is very helpful. So this shows you what's been changed recently on the plugins. And if you look through here, they change things very often. And they also add features. So there's a lot of fixed, updated font. Awesome, that's good. Fixes, fixes, fixes added some stuff, all great, added, added, added. So they update this thing like crazy, which is why I always recommend Beaver Builder Page Builder for businesses, because you get something up to date, you get new features and new enhancements all the time. All right, so now we're gonna close out of this and go to our WordPress website, and we're gonna go to plugins. And right now we have two plugins installed. Remember we said to install the classic editor, which we left. 
We're going to go to Add New, Upload a Plugin, Choose a File. I'm going to go to Downloads. We're going to do the Beaver Builder plugin. It'll say dash agency dash pro or dash standard, whatever you got. So we click Install. I'll have to give it a moment. It always goes a little slower when I record. Activate. And I will come back to that in a second. We're going to go to Plugins, Add New, Upload, Choose. We're going to do the theme. It's called Theme Builder as the plugin, which gets really confusing because it's called Themer on the download site. We're going to go to Activate. So you can see here we have Beaver Builder plugin. Again, it can be Agency Pro or Standard. And we have Beaver Themer. Now we're going to go to Appearance, Themes, Add New, Upload, Choose a File. We're going to do the, you can do Child or the regular, BB Theme. So we're going to click Install. And then I'm going to skip Activate. I'm going to go back to Themes, Add New, Upload a Theme, Choose a Theme, and then it says BB theme child, that's what we want. Install, and then I'm gonna activate this one. So you always install, I mean, and activate the child theme. So the child theme allows you to make edits and enhancements to it. And then um, it takes um, all of its functions and styles from the parent theme. So we add custom stuff to the child theme. And then when the parent theme updates, all of our stuff isn't wiped out. So if we use the parent theme and we add custom updates to it, the next time Beaver Builder updates that theme, it wipes all of our stuff out. But if we have a child theme set up, which is what this is, um, we can add updates to the child theme itself. And when this one updates, we keep all our customizations. So that's why we use a child theme all the time. And if you're not using Beaver Builder, um, there is a plugin that will help you build a child theme no matter what theme you're using. And we have a link in the description about that. All right, so now we are gonna add our favorite and most recommended plugins for business sites. All right, so now head over to plugins on the left-hand side, and we're gonna go to add new. And then there's a search bar on the top right. And we've already added the Beaver Builder plugin. So next we're actually going to add disable comments. So for the most part, if you um, have a blog, there'll be comments at the bottom. And typically, we've seen on business sites that 99% of the time, this is spam. So we enter in disable comments, and we turn the comments off, and we let people know in the blog posts. If you want to leave a comment, check us out on Facebook and leave a comment there. So there's one called disable comments. It has this red uh, quote box a million plus active installs as of right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit install and then activate. The next one we like to add is called Google Analytics Dashboard. So we'll search for Google Analytics, there we go. Comes up number one, Google Analytics Dashboard for WP by exact me metrics. The top two uh, Google Analytics Dashboard plugin by Monster Insights they're actually owned by the same company now because this one bought out this one, but I still like this one better. So go ahead and hit install and activate. So there's that. A lot of plugins will ask people for information to collect information. I always click no. I don't want to be in some database. I don't want to be over marketed to. So I'm going to go ahead and hit no thanks. And then these other configuration pages we'll get to. The next one we like is a forms plugin. So a lot of people recommend contact form seven, but you have to use a lot of short codes and we kind of like to stay away from code and we love drag and drop. So for that, we use Ninja forms. So this is a freemium plugin. Um, it allows you to do a lot of stuff for free. And if you want to do additional things, they ask for a little extra money to pay for those features, which we think is worthwhile. So go ahead and hit install. If you're doing heavy forms like applications or say like a, a real estate application or employment applications and you need to fine tune your forms, we highly recommend Gravity Forms, but it's a paid plugin right out of the gate. Um, so we'll just put Ninja Forms on for now. 
Uh, next, we install a plugin called Safe Redirect. Safe Redirect allows you to redirect links. So there's two. We actually like both of these, Redirection and Safe Redirect, but we think this one's easier to use. So if you ever delete a blog post or people are going to an old page that you don't want to see, uh, that you don't want them to see, this redirects them to that page. Uh, next, we like to have people share our content. So we always install a plugin called Social Warfare, which allows people to click and share your stuff. So go ahead and hit install. If you don't want people sharing it or you don't want sharing buttons on there, just don't install this one. And then lastly, we always recommend Yoast SEO. So Y-O-A-S-T, there it is right there. This gives you a stoplight traffic system um, for managing your SEO for posts and pages. So green is good, yellow is kind of a warning, and red means you really gotta watch what, um, how Google is gonna see your post. So we'll go ahead and hit install and activate. All right, so we now have things more set up. Our plugins are installed, we have our theme, and now it's time to get into the fun stuff of designing the business website. So if we go back to the front end of the site, which we haven't seen in a while, we see here we have our WordPress business site. That looks a little different than before, and now it says it's powered by Beaver Builder. So we're gonna start here at the top under Customize. So it'll say your site name, Customize, New, the Y is the SEO plugin, and then the Purge SG is SiteGround Cache, and then over here is your name. So we're gonna go straight to Customize, and we're gonna start building this theme out and really adding the styling options that we want. All right, so over here it says the active theme is Beaver Builder Child Theme. If it's not, go ahead and hit Change, and you can change the theme that's installed, or you can install a new one. So go back, we're gonna leave it at Beaver Builder. They have some presets here where you can change the colors, um, but I've never found that these work well with what people are looking for. So I have changed it to this one and it's been close, but people usually want a slightly different color. Um, so you can see them here. You can also turn these off as well, so if you want a dark site. But I leave it just at the default and I skip the presets completely. Next, it goes down to General. I click layout and I can choose, do I want full width? And full width is edge to edge. So from the edge of one screen to the, to the edge of the other side of the screen. So I always leave this on as full width because I like full width sites. And the trend right now is full width. Um, content width, I don't really mess with this unless I really need to. Scroll, a button that scrolls back up to the top. If you're gonna have really long form con uh, content, you can have an arrow that you click and it jumps you back up to the top. So that's what that is. And then the CSS framework. So CSS is the style sheet. And this is saying, what framework do you wanna use? I actually change this to a minimal of Bootstrap 4 or a full. I typically do full, but some people like the minimal. I like to just bring it all in. And then Font Awesome is which style of icon you want. If you go to fontawesome.com, you can choose, but I like the newest one each time so I can have a fresh site. So we'll click new and we're, or we'll click five. Next, we're gonna go to background. We are gonna leave our background, or we're gonna change it. Right now it's a light gray. We're gonna change it to white. So you won't see a lot of change there. If you want a background image, you click select image and you drag it into the screen and now you have a background photo. Next, accent color. You can click the select color and either put in the hex value of either your logo or the color you like, or you can just kind of drag this around and pick a color. So I can go over to pink, I can make it pinker, I can make it light pink, etc. And you see that the links have now changed. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my logo color. So I'm gonna go to my site and there's my top logo. And I use a program called SIP Color Picker. It's for the Mac and I'll look one up for Windows as well. And let me know if you have a question about that. Here's SIP. It allows me to pick the color. There it is. Without having to know what it is. And I'll highlight this and I'll go to paste. And now it gives me a red. And then a hover color, you can either do the same color, so paste that in, 
Or you can make it slightly darker so when things are hovered over, it'll change. So for example, if you see here, it's hard to see, it's kind of faint, maybe I'll make it more extreme here. So when I hover over it, it goes dark. Do you see that? Um, I actually just like a subtle change. That's personal preference, totally up to you. All right, so next, after accent color, we're gonna go down to headings. Headings are, this is a heading here. Um, it's basically the H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 tag. So let's take headings. Um, so you can style options for all headings. So if I want them to be black, or I can change them to blue. And you'll see, see that the heading changed here. And then these are also headings as well. Um, so I'm going to change this to our red as well. And then you can change the font family here. So the top ones are system fonts. Anything below that is Google Fonts. If you search for Google Fonts, you can see um, a demo of the ones that are available. So fonts.google.com. And there are tons to choose from. So you can go through here. You can fill out this side thing here, number of styles, thicknesses, slants, etc. You can see featured ones. They have all sorts of stuff that you can dig through and get different fonts. Just keep in mind that certain fonts are a little slower than other fonts, so that may impact the overall speed of the site. So I usually stick with system fonts and Helvetica's number one, which I like and I usually leave it. Font weight, you can set it there. And then the different sizes are here. Typically I leave all the defaults, but if you ever do wanna change it, it is in here. And lastly, instead of all headings, you can do a custom H1. So the H1 is the biggest and the boldest and a different color. And then two, three, four, five, six can be another color as well. So you can see here that it's a different color and then H1's different. But I usually leave it on the all headings and I don't change it. Next text. The default text is 808080, which I actually think is a little um, too light for gray. So I always change this to a slightly darker gray and I do three, 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 six times. And you can see here, it's a little darker and there's a lot more contrast and it's easier on the eyes to read. So I always change that to three, 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 three. So six threes. Um, next, we're gonna go to buttons. I usually leave this as the default. There's no buttons on this page, but you can do custom button stylings here. So I just leave it on default. Lastly, social links. If you wanna paste in like Facebook or Twitter, etc., you can do so here. So if I grab a link, go to my site, I'll just copy the Facebook link and paste it in here. And I'll show you where these come up in the future. So copy this, go down to, did I miss it? Oh yeah, it's right there. Um, Google's going away um, if it hasn't already when you're watching this video. So I wouldn't fill that one out. YouTube, copy link. Come down here to YouTube. And then lastly, we'll do Instagram. I'll leave it off for now. All right. So those are the general. We'll go back to header. Now in the header, we have the option to add a top bar. So we're gonna go ahead and add a two column top bar. So I'll turn that on and you'll see here that it's white and it has a choose the menu option. So under column one, we're gonna add a phone number. So there's our phone number in the top left. And we can also say contact us. So put in a pipe there and do contact us. We'll make that a link in the future. Under column two, we can have a menu, which we haven't even created yet, or we can have text and social icons. So we can say, actually I move contact us down here. And if you look, I wrote contact, but I didn't have to write anything else. It added Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube from that previous reference that we just did. Next, we can go to top bar style, and we're gonna change this to a darker color. So do a dark gray, like that. And then we're gonna change our text color to white. And I'm also gonna change my link color to white. And then I'll do the hover color, which is when you hover over it. I'll click white, but I'll actually make it a slight gray. So now if you look, we have a bar at the top. 
And then when we hover over the links, they turn a slight gray color. Just to kind of give the effect um, that they are links. So I'll go back to top bar layout and I'll remove this pipe here. All right, so next we're gonna go to header layout. Navigation right now is on the right hand side and we can change the padding. The fixed header of this page isn't long enough so it's hard to see. So I'll actually move this up. When I scroll down, you'll see it says WordPress site remains. And you'll see that further in. If you don't want it to fade in, you can have it shrink. So I'll scroll down and it just shrinks it down a bit. I can have it fixed or it just stays exactly where it is, no matter where you are on the site. And this will make more sense when we add content. Or disabled is when you just scroll down, it, it stays at the top where it should be. Um, so you can choose which one you like. I actually usually choose the fade in one. I wish this was a little bit further down on the list here, but that's where it is. Header style, you can add a background color. Make this big again. So now it's gray. We're actually gonna make it, leave it at white. And then we're gonna add, you can add a background image, you can change the text, etc. But I'm gonna leave mine at white. I'm gonna add a logo. So if you have your logo, just make sure that it's just absolutely not humongous. You want something under 50 kilobytes if you can. And so now we're gonna go ahead and add that logo. On the left hand side, it says logo type and it says text. I'm gonna click the drop down and select image and it gives you a whole world of possibilities. You have a regular logo image and a retina display one. So retina display should be, it usually says 2X next to it. So it should be, you know, twice the size, um, um, not file size, but twice the pixel size of the regular logo to show cleanly on a retina display, especially if you have font types or different logos with lots of words in them. The fade in header, when you scroll down and that bar fades in, um, you can actually have a different logo, which is nice. And then there's the retina as well. And then finally the mobile header logo. This allows you to change the logo for smaller devices. So say you do have a text heavy uh, logo. Um, so you have words in it or maybe a tagline. You may never be able to read it if it's this big. So maybe you have a special logo just for mobile devices. So we're gonna go ahead and do a regular logo image. We're gonna go to select image. And I have one already added here. So just press avenues, logo, um, it's 9K. And then the size is 608 by 352 pixels. The reason I'm choosing this one is I just wanna show you that if you bring in a large logo here, it'll just jam it right into the header. So you wanna make sure to use canva.com, Photoshop, um, I use something called, I'm gonna space what it is, Affinity Photo um, to shrink down the height of this. So if I don't like this one, I can click change. I can bring in a smaller logo. So this one right here has a height of 100 pixels. Again, I'm gonna copy the title, put it in the alt, hit choose, and you'll see the height change here. So that brings the height down um, and changes it up. And then if I go under retina, I can select image and choose the larger one, which was this one, choose. And now you see it went from fuzzy to a very crisp um, looking logo because this is a retina display that I'm currently using this on. Um, so I'll leave that at that. Next, we're gonna go to navigation layout. Spacing's at the top here, um, but we don't have a navigation to show the spacing on. Search icon, which is this here. I normally turn this off unless you have a content heavy website, you don't really need search because typically everything's in the menu. But if you have a lot of blog posts or different things that people do need to find, I would leave that on. Responsive uh, menu, do you want the hamburger icon, which is three lines, or do you want it to say the menu button? This is all up to you. All everything else I just leave as it is. Uh, navigation style, let's go back here. Um, sub menu indicators so that puts a shows a um, down arrow next to your menu items. I always turn this on to show that there's menu underneath it. And we'll have to create a menu to really see this. So let's go create a menu right now. So we'll back out of this. We'll go down to menus. Um, it says create a menu. I always title it either top menu or main menu. 
So if I add other menus in the future, like a footer menu or maybe a menu just for blogs, um, I know where it is. So the location is going to be in the header, um, which is this right here. Um, the top bar menu is this black bar at the top if I were to add a menu there. Go ahead and hit next. Give it a second to think. You see it went blank here instead of choose a menu. Now I click add menu items. I can click plus for adding home. So I hit the plus sign and it adds home to the menu. See it over here. But you can't see it over here because I gotta close this. So there's home right there. I'll go to add, and we don't have any pages yet, so I'm gonna make pages up. So under custom links, I'll put a hash, which is a link that takes us nowhere. And I'll say services, business services. And then we're gonna do an about page. We're gonna do a contact page. And we'll create these, some of them. And we'll do a news page. And then to reorder these, I just drag them around on here. And then I close add items and there's our menu. So we can go back, back, header, navigation layout, excuse me. Oh yeah, and there's spacing. So I can make it, actually hold on, that's for the other thing. Style, and we didn't do a, we didn't do a drop down, so you can't actually see that. Link color, we'll do blue, and our hover color, we'll click blue again, but we'll make it darker. Font size, if you want it a little bigger or not, that's here. I wouldn't go too huge, usually stick between 14 and 16. I've worked with a lot of nonprofits that help kind of senior citizens, and having really small font size really doesn't help people's eyes. So I'd stay around 14, 15. Uh, again, the generals are the way to go. If I hide these controls, I can see how it looks. So we're getting there. All right, back to the top here. Go to layouts. All right, layout. So nav on the right. So right now it's on the right of the logo. I can do it on the left of the logo. I can do it centered. You see it right there. Centered in line where it puts the logo in the middle. We're really gonna do nav bottom. So basically now it's just under the header. It's the bottom of the header. So we have the top bar, the header here, and then under the header. And then once we do this, we get an additional kind of widget area here. that says give us a call 1-800 and has our Facebook stuff here. Now we have that above in this bar, um, which we can elect to turn off, which I think I'll just turn off. So I'll go back, top bar layout, none, but at least you got to see how that's put together. We'll go back, I'll go to nav spacing. We'll go to nav style. And then if you want a background image, you would put it in here. Um, and then a background color, we're gonna change this to blue. So if we have a blue background with blue links, we can't see anything, but when you hover over it, you can see it. So now we gotta go and change the text color to white. And now you can see it there with the hover. All right, next in the customizer, we're gonna leave the header area. We're gonna go to content. Content background, we're just gonna leave as white. Uh, you have the ch options to change the opacity of the color and then also add an image. Blog layout, it's asking for the sidebar on the right side, that's what we're looking at right now. I've actually been turning this off a lot lately, having no sidebar and just clean layouts, I really like. Um, post author is up to you, I leave it on. Post date is up to you. And then comment count I actually turn off because I disable the comments. And I tell people my blog posts just to go to Facebook and leave a comment there or to send a tweet. Archive layout, show full text, I leave all of these as they are. Post layout, again, I leave these all how they are. And then WooCommerce and Lightbox, just go ahead and leave them. Footer. Uh, footer widgets layout. Do you want it to display on all pages, home page, or disabled? That's up to you. I leave it on to all pages. 
Footer widget styles are in here. So you can change the text color and the link color. The layout is in here. Right now it's one column. I can change it to two. And then it shows a little bit more information. You see how it widens this out. Um, the style itself, I can change the background color. They can then change the text color. And then I'll change the link color so you can actually see them. And the hover color to a gray. So that was nice and quick. So it matches my top bar here. Parallax is just an effect if you want it. If you enable it, you add um, an image further back and it gives the parallax look. So go back, back, back. All right, next, widgets. Um, widgets in the Beaver Builder theme, they're really just are the columns for the footer. So you don't see widgets anywhere else because you style it within here. Um, and then the after post widget. Um, so the columns, we'll go to the column, we'll go to add, and we'll go down to text. And we'll say contact us. And we'll put in a phone number. So you always want your nap. So insert nap here. Your nap is your name, your address, and your phone number on every page of the site. And putting it on the footer is a really easy way to do that. Press Avenue address street and then our phone is already on there and then I always put contact us and then I put a link to that so go ahead and highlight it click the link we don't have a contact page yet otherwise you just click search for contact it'll find it and it'll be there uh, one thing about Beaver Builder is it does not put um, and underline under your links. Some people like this, some people don't. Um, if I hover over it, it shows an underline. You can highlight the text here, hit Control U or Command U, and it adds the underline right there. So go back, we'll add a call, another column here. Um, we'll do a search. We'll go back, we'll go to the third, we'll add Social Warfare does the most popular posts. Um, so I can say popular news, and I can display the most popular three posts, which we only have one, which is the initial one when we've signed up for SiteGround. And then lastly, in the fourth widget slot, um, you can do recent posts, you can do a tag cloud, you can do more text. Typically when I have a lot of spaces, I would do about the company. info about your company here and then I would have a link that says learn more and it goes to the about page so I'll highlight this click this I would typically search about but we don't have an about page so it would look like that um, or I can put the hash and then it control U or command U to get the underline so it's base pretty basic down there all right, so go back. Um, I'm gonna go to general and just change the accent color since we're kind of doing a blue theme. Let's see if I can get a blue I like. There we go. And the hover color will do darker. So the accent color changes these links here. And I'm gonna go back to headings and change this to blue. There we go. And we're gonna go back. Next text, uh, again, we've changed this color. Um, we're gonna go to footer widgets code. All right, so code. You have four options here, JavaScript code, and this adds it in the scripts tags in the header. So if you have a plugin or something where you need additional stuff for that, header code, typically in here or in here, you would add, this is directly after, oh, sorry. In the header head code section, excuse me, this is where you'd add your Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager or Facebook Pixels. It's all up to you. And then footer code, same thing. It tells you where it's rendering directly before the closing body tag. So it'd be right here at the bottom. Um, so just depending on where you want it, but typically in the head is where you want your Google Analytics. Settings, site identity is just the title of the site up here. Um, so I would change this to the name of your company 
and then the tagline of your company. So I don't really use a tagline, so I have no tagline there. Next, we have the site icon. This is the little icon that shows up in people's browsers. In Chrome, you typically don't see this. You do see it in Firefox, Safari, etc. Or if people save it as a bookmark, you see it as well. You want your icon to be 512 by 512 pixels, so it's a perfect square. It does not need to be a .ico, which is a .icon file. It can just be a regular file. So I have a JPEG, so I'll pull that in which is 512 by 512. I copy the title, I paste it in the alt, I hit select, and now it shows here an example. There's Press Avenue there, super hard to read when it's teeny tiny. You can see it up there as well. Um, but I do like to set that. If people ever save the shortcut on their phone, it kind of looks like an app button as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. Homepage sh settings. So this here says, right now it's displaying our latest posts. Well, it's a business website, so I want to show a static page. So I click static page, and then all we have is one post. So I'm actually going to add a new page. I'm going to call it the home page. So click add, and I spelled it wrong. Um, so I'll actually add another one. I'll call it home, and we'll fix that in a moment. So home is our home page, and posts is going to be... I'm going to add a new page. I'm going to call it news. And that'll be our post page. So posts are our blog, our news, our PR, anything like that. If you're not going to update it or have any news, just get rid of it and don't have a posts page. So under here, just go back to just select. All right, going back in the customizer, back again. Menus we already visited. Um, we do have a couple actual pages now. So we go to add items, pages, and now it says home as the page. So I can click home, drag it to the top. This is a custom link one, so I'll just get rid of it. And then we now have news. So I'll drag that under news and I'll delete the one that says custom link. And then I'll go ahead and go back and back again. Additional CSS, if you ever want to style any of this, we can make a whole nother video about this. You can add it in here. And then export and import. You can install and activate this. You can export out your customizer settings and import them into another site where you'd have this style be exactly the same as maybe press avenue number two that you're making or business site number two. Now that we're done with this, we're going to go ahead and hit publish. And then we're going to go basically to the home page. I'll hit X. And here we are on the home page. So not the best looking site so far, and now we're gonna start leveraging Beaver Builder more. We've really just created this header area, the menu, and this footer down here. Now we're gonna edit this area right here where it says home and edit to ma really make it actually look like a website. All right, so before we get into it, we're gonna talk a little bit about the block editor and Gutenberg. So at the top of this page, it says edit page, and it also says Beaver Builder and the dot next to it is gray. If the dot is green, that means you've used Beaver Builder in the past and this page currently uses Beaver Builder to edit the content. If I go to edit page, it brings me to the back end of WordPress. So I have home and I have text editor. The reason I see this is I have the classic editor installed, if you remember from about 45 minutes ago. Um, down here on the right hand side, it says editor, switch to block editor. So if you don't have the classic editor installed and you click edit page, it shows this. So we have a title and some content and this below. But we really want to use Beaver Builder so we can leverage drag and drop um, parts and images instead of just going through the block editor here. So to find it, um, you would go to the three lines in the top right, three dots, excuse me. Now if we come down, it says convert to Beaver Builder. So that's how you would get away from the block editor and into the amazing powers of Beaver Builder. You can also switch back to that classic editor as well. Um, so it's just completely up to you, but I just want to show you. So if I convert to Beaver Builder, it now shows home, which is the name of the page we're on. Then it says this Beaver Builder block. Beaver Builder lets you drag and drop layouts on the front end. That's what we want. So we can click use standard editor and it'll turn this off and we'll be stuck here in the block editor until we go to the three dots again or we can click Launch Beaver Builder. 
It saves the page, this wheel spins, and it brings us back to the front end to show us Beaver Builder itself. All right, so now we're gonna get into this. Um, here we are in the Beaver Builder area. And when I move the mouse around, a gray and blue box show up, if you can see that right there. I can't edit where it says Press Avenue or this menu or up here. I can click the links, but it's not very helpful for me. We're really editing this little box here. If a box doesn't show up, we're gonna go ahead and add one just to show you. Click the plus sign in the top right hand corner, click rows, one column, click and hold, drag down until it shows a blue line if you can see that's flashing. And that's where it's gonna be dropped. So I'll go ahead and let go. We're gonna create a sweeping hero image across the top. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click the row settings, which is this wrench. And then under width, I want full width because I want a sweeping wide image. Uh, you can also move this around if you can't quite see where you want it. And then additionally, you can resize this depending on the size of your screen. Next, content width. So you can have the background be super wide, but the content can actually line up in a nice column. So you can leave that as fixed. Everything else I leave the same. I do change the colors, but we'll come back to that. I'm gonna skip down to where it says background. Under background, you can choose a color, and it's just right here. You can choose a gradient, so you can go from one color to another. A photo, so if I choose photo, I can say select photo, and I can drag a photo in here. So I got one right here. Let's go ahead and drag it in. And then I would do the title and the alt tags to be something appropriate. And then there's the photo in the background. What the photo initially looks like is this right here. So I'm not quite seeing all of it and it's because the content in here isn't filling the whole thing. Uh, additionally, you can do a video. We get asked a lot about people doing video. So I go to video. Um, on that note, if you need free images or video, the site for images that we absolutely love is Unsplash. You can go to search high resolution photos. So I can say search for business or businesswoman or businessman or shaking hands or meeting or anything you want. And you get all these photos, which you can use for free commercially without giving credit or paying. Completely up to you. We do recommend giving credit. It's, it does ask you that. So if I download this image, it does say, do you want to give credit? You can do so by doing a credit badge or you can tweet and say thank you. Um, so that's up to you. If you need free videos, there's a site called cover.co. So cover with an extra R, C-O-V-E-R-R dot C-O. And they have free videos that are cover images like this one that you can use to put in the background. So I've chosen this one here uh, to give you an example. You download them from the site. So I click download and I download it. And then I uploaded it to YouTube and I listed it as unlisted. Because on YouTube, people really don't want to watch this lady type. There's nothing really going on here. Um, so, but I am going to use this as my background. So if I go to share and I copy the YouTube link and come back to Beaver Builder under video here, it says source media library, which I recommend against or YouTube or Vimeo, which I also recommend. So I put that in there and enable audio is up to you. A fallback photo. You can take a screenshot of the video and put it in. And then we will go to save, see if that loads. And you see it's not quite big enough, but you can see that lady typing in the background. So now we're gonna add a call to action. I'm gonna put in, we will do a heading here that says need a WordPress biz websites copy this the blue over the top can't really see it that well so I'm going to change the color to white uh, one thing I always do is I set presets for the colors and I always add white or black or the dark gray that I prefer to use so all F's so six F's is white and I click the plus what this does is later on when I need this color I click into color I click color presets and there's white right out of the gate. 
I recommend adding your logo colors and any other colors that you use frequently to save time to this color picker. So there it is there, font size. I can change the size here by dragging this um, up and down so I can make it smaller. You can align it in the middle, you can put it to the left, we're gonna leave it on the left. I can add shadows, spacing, etc. So go ahead and hit save. On this, I'm gonna add bullet points in a icon format. So I'm gonna drag icon under heading and I'll select this and I'll say WordPress. And we'll skip, mm, we'll do this one right here. So we'll say easy to use WordPress sites. I'll hit save. And you see here, I can't quite see it. So I need to go back and go to style and I go to color and you'll see that color preset. I'll make it white. So you can see the icon is white, um, but the text isn't. So I need to go to text color and make it white as well. And if under font, I can change the size to make it more readable. Easy to use WordPress sites. Still kind of can't see it on the background there, but we will fix that. Um, then I duplicate this three times. And I change the spacing by going to advanced, margins, zero on the top, zero on the bottom. And now they're spaced out a little bit better. Now we're gonna go to the wrench in this hero image here. And we're gonna put an overlay color on the video. So it says background overlay under color. I can also do gradient. We'll do gradient and spice this up. I can choose two colors. So I'm gonna do the blue. So we're doing a blue site and you can see the blue overlay, but I'm also gonna turn down the opacity just a little bit. I'm gonna go to the blue color on the end. Maybe we'll do purple. We'll turn this down just a bit. So now we have a blue and a purple. This here changes how far the gradient moves across. Do you want it 50%? Zero is it starts at zero and then starts to immediately fade in. I actually really like this look. And then this is the angle in which it um, happens. So I actually will do 45. All right, so there's that. I'll go ahead and save. Now this banner is much better. Um, you see the video in the background loading from YouTube. And then I have uh, a header tag here and then easy to use WordPress sites. Let's see. Um, let's see. Today, we are here to help or whatever, whatever you want. And then on the icons, if you go to replace, I get rid of the WordPress here, tons of icons you can choose from if you chose the font library, um, font awesome library number five. So we'll do a birthday cake and hit save and then go back here sites we will pick so many choices the gear and i'll hit save and then finally i want to add a button or maybe you want to add an image so i can go to plus rows two columns drag them right above the header and now i can add this to the left side so i can drag these into this column a little hard to see with the blue background there's that and there's that. And on this side, I'm gonna add a button and an image. So let's do a button. And I'm basically just gonna say, learn more. Learn more today. And this would take us to our services page, our about page, or something that is relevant to what you are asking people. So learn more today, and usually I do an arrow on these. Um, so it's like A-R-R. Oops, too many R's. We will do the right arrow. And I'll link it to the services page, which we don't have quite yet. Next under style, so I can't see the button, so I'm gonna move it over here. I am going to make this full width, which will be the length, the full length of this sidebar here. And then text color, I'm actually gonna change to blue. Hover color, that's when you hover over it, the text itself. 
Um, and then background color, I'm gonna make white. And then the hover, I'll make a light blue. So I'll turn this down. It's actually gray. Turn this down here. Actually, let's do this. All right, and then you can do flat, a gradient, you can do animations, etc. I'll go to save. And then now I'm gonna add a photo here. Let's see, let's get a photo of a person. Let's see, it could be your headshot, it could be a salesperson, it could be stock, it's up to you. Um, let's see, let's do business, business woman. Let's see what this comes up with. Close this, these look like models. We want someone actually working. No, that's not bad. It's not a woman, but let's see. So we'll go with this one here. Um, so first you download it. All right, slight change of plans. I found this one instead because the background doesn't quite come off as easily. So this one's pretty isolated. There's nothing in the background and she's looking out there. This could be a picture of you or someone you work with. There's an excellent uh, website called remove.bg. So remove background. What this does is it's AI that removes background images from people. So for example, I uploaded this original image and it removed the background there. I tried some other ones and it cut this poor lady's arm off. Um, here's the original one I tried. The laptops in her arms, of course, removes that. That's probably not quite what we want. So how this works is on Unsplash, I click download. Downloads the image. I go to remove.bg. I select the photo. It uploads it. You see the bar go across. Some kind of magic happens. And it cuts the background out. Then I just cropped it using Affinity Photo. Again, you can use Canva, Paint, anything else that you got. And then I uploaded it to WordPress itself. So here we are back on Beaver Builder. I'll click plus and I'll add photo. And I'll just drag it below the button. I'll go to select photo, upload that photo, and I already have it right here. Select photo. So there she's at the bottom. Maybe this is you. It could be a computer. It could be anything. Or you could just not have it. Um, but just to show you, she doesn't quite touch the bottom, so go to advanced, and I'll hit zero, and go to save. Don't really like this button up here, so I'll kind of change this up. What I'm going to do is pull this header out of the column and put it above it to give us a little more space, and put this down here. It says learn more. Again, she still doesn't touch the bottom. Looks kind of weird that she's cut off at the waist here. So I'll go over to my row settings, go to advanced. These are already zeroed out. So instead, I'll go to column, column settings, and I know this is fast, but I want to move on. Equal heights, yes. Vertical alignment, bottom. Let's say she moves right to the bottom there. I'll hit save. Let me see, this is full size. So there we go there. Maybe you wouldn't have a woman there, maybe you would. You can have your logo, you can have a group of people, um, but it definitely gets attention. Um, all right, so moving on. Further down from here, we're going to showcase our services. So get rid of this box. And I will go to rows, three rows, or three columns, excuse me. Drag it down there, and it gives us three boxes. It's really popular to have icons in this style of box. So we'll go to icon, and we'll say select. And on this particular one, we'll just stick around the web design premise. So I selected an icon, and I'll go to Style, and I'll make it a lot larger. And icons load a l way faster than um, uh, images do. So I'll pick a color here to kind of stick with our theme. So there's that, and I'll hit Save. Over this icon, I'll go to these two squares here. When you hover over it, it says Duplicate. I'll duplicate three, and I'll change them up. So I'll go here, replace, I'll do a gear. Uh, maybe I'll do this one. Fingerprint, go back, replace, and then do support. 
Nope. Let's see what comes up here. Maybe we'll do a briefcase. Save. Next, I do a heading as an H2 or an H3. So let's say business websites. Um, in the past, people would make, um, I'll leave it as an H2. They'd make fonts as an H2 or H1, which ruins your SEO. You should only have one H1. Um, but now Beaver Builder allows you to drag and make words bigger or smaller, depending on your needs. Also, I want this closer to the icon, so I'll go to Advanced, Zero. Then to keep the same style, I simply just duplicate this three t two times, drag it over, drag it over. Security. Um, I'll say business security. And then uh, after this, I typically put a button below it, or you can just make these clickable. So to make this clickable, I would put a link right here. So again, if I go to select, we only have one page right now. So I can say home page, which doesn't make sense, but you would say business websites, about websites, etc. You click that link and it fills it in. And hit save and now this is a link. Additionally, you can click the icon and do the same thing. I can do select, type about, which would come up if I had an about page, and then hit save and now this is linkable as well. Next down, we're gonna add some testimonials. So I'll go to rows and we will do one column. I'm going to go to the gear, I'm going to do full width, save, and now you see that here. We'll go to plus, modules, and then down to testimonials. Uh, I skip it right there. Drag testimonials into this row. Now we can edit the testimonial, so go ahead and edit. Is fantastic. I Highly recommend them. Enter down. I usually do a right justification tilde, and I put their name and then their last name, dot last name. And I hit save. Now what this does is it creates one testimonial. You see it right there. And then if I move this box, you see highly recommend this company. There it is there. Um, you can change it to a slider so it can auto play. Um, and it can delay a certain amount of time. It can slide or fade in and out. You can transition right to left or left to right. And then the style, you can make it wide, compact, if you give it a second to load. Um, I usually keep it wide, even if it's a compact area, because I like the style better. It gives you more options to change things. Under font size, we're gonna make this way bigger. Uh, we'll, we'll just center this. And then you'll see here it's getting a little cut off, and I'll show you how to fix that. You can either turn the size down, or actually I will center this. Um, or you can change the padding in the advanced area, which is right here. So there's name. So we'll just duplicate these. Duplicate, duplicate. This lets you drag the order if you hit the cross. I'm about to edit. See the change here. Save. And now we're going to just style this a little different completely so we can have some breaks in the page. So I'll go to colors and then down to background and then background color. I'll choose a color. Do blue. Fade this down a bit. Save. And there you go. We have three testimonials. I'll give this way more white. I like white space, so I always like to add a little bit more margin than we normally would have. So I'll say 50. If I want 50 across the board, I click the link, it links them all across the board for me. But in this instance, I actually just want 50 above and below. Go ahead and hit save. There we go, looking pretty good. Um, testimonials.
All right, so the jazz is up a little more. I'm going to add a background to this blue block. So we're going on a background photo. And I'll use the one I was going to use as a hero image. So again, fill out the title and the alt for SEO purposes. So you can see that there, but I can't really read the testimonial itself. So under background overlay, I'm going to change the color to blue. And then I'm going to take this and change the opacity so I can actually see it. Maybe I'll change it to white. Let's see. So there we go. And I'm going to add a little more padding to this row to give it a little more space. That's a little more. Maybe do a lot more. There we go. So if your testimonials are a lot larger, definitely do change this to make them larger. And there we go. We have a very basic business website homepage. We have a hero image with a call to action. Um, I added a little quote here to jazz this up with a random woman on the side. Um, but what's nice about this is it calls your eyes to it. Maybe it's silly, but it really does call the focus in and people may read it and actually click on it. So if they click this, it takes them to a page maybe that says, help, I need a business website today. Do you need help? Maybe you do. Fill out this form. Give us a call. So it's a great call to action to do something like this. Further down, these should be linked to business pages that support you know, your website, that support this relevancy. So if I click business security, it should take me to that. And additionally, I would add a button here that says read all reviews. Reviews are very popular right now. Um, view all reviews. So go to select a line in the middle. And then because this is quite faint in itself, the button really stands out. You may want this, but you also may not want this. So under background color, I'm going to turn this down to white and hover. I'm going to make gray. Oops. And then the text, I'm going to make blue. I'm just going to save this blue so I can reuse it. So if I go to hover, my color presets, reuse that blue, make it a little darker, and then I'm going to save the preset of the hover. So read all reviews. And I want this to stick out more. So I'll go to border. Under style, I'll go to solid. Width, I'll click one, and then I will click that link. So one all the way across. Then I'm going to make it our blue color. So it pops a little bit more. Go ahead and hit save. Again, clicking this will take this to my reviews page, um, which will show reviews from either Facebook, Google, or ones that people sent you. All right, when we're done, we can hit done. We can discard, which throws out all our, uh, everything we've done, it just throws it in the garbage. Save draft, so if you're not ready for this homepage, say you already have a homepage and you need someone to check this or you're not ready to launch this kind of look, um, save draft is for you. Or you can hit publish, which then makes it immediately live for anyone that comes to the site. So here it is immediately. One last thing I will point out is if I go back to Beaver Builder, go to any row and click that wrench right there, and go to advanced, I can see what this looks like on a mobile phone or on a tablet by clicking this computer screen. So I click that once, and now this is what it looks like on a tablet in portrait mode. Still just about the same. What this feature does that I don't like is it strips away that header bar, um, which you can see somewhere else, but in this particular scenario, you can't see it. So I click here again, and then it shows this is what it looks like on a phone, and then I can click exit. And it brings me right back here. All right. So next we're gonna jump into how to create a page. All right, from here we're gonna go to new, and then page, and we're gonna create an about page. An about page will be just like a services page or anything with information. You can say about or about us. And here we are again, it's added us to the regular WordPress editor. We're going to click Beaver Builder, and it opens up Beaver Builder here. So on a page, we want to have a heading at the top, and the heading is what the page is about. So we're going to say about us, or about our company. We want this to be an H1 tag, and this will be the only one that's an H1 tag. I'll click Save. Uh, next, we're going to add some text. So go to Plus, Text Editor, drag it right below or I can drag it below that if I want to change this in any way. 
Um, I need some dummy text for this website, so I'm going to go to something called Cake Ipsum, and you would add information about your website. I'm adding just dummy information to this so I can show you how to do it. So I paste it in the text area because um, I didn't want anything to be carried through from this website to here, and I'll hit Save. Um, there's a lot of space between this here, but what I'm going to do is style this heading by clicking this wrench and then going to a full width and then changing the color to white, but white on white we can't see. So we're gonna change the background to a gradient. And then if I saved my purple colors, which I didn't, but I'll show you. I'll do a blue going to purple, um, just like the home page on a 45 degree. So you can see that there, you can really style up and change this. You can put an image in the background, you put that same video. Um, if you don't like the spacing between the words and the top here, you can change that by going to advanced and changing this. I actually do like it, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. So about us, there's more information about us. Again, you'd have a call to action at the bottom or a contact us or a link. And that's how you create a page. I will style this a little further. So I'm gonna do background. Photo, select, I'll do this one again. And then I'll go to overlay as a gradient. Maybe we'll just leave it in blue. Simple overlay. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, and then I'll hit done, publish. And then there's the about us page. To get it in the menu, because we didn't have it before, we would go to menus. And now here's about. Add to menu, drag it to where we want it, and then remove that dummy one and hit save. So we go back to the home page here. There's our home page with our video. There's our about us. Looks super clean with that nice gradient there. Now we're gonna create a form so people can contact us. So we created, we added ninja forms to create forms. It says, hey, do you want ninja forms to collect data on you? No, I never do, I always hit no. Um, and then they create an automatic contact me form. So to edit it, you click here or this gear and you go to edit. Um, name, email, message, submit. That's exactly what I want. So I'll go to email actions. They can store the submission. So if it, it goes into the database and it gets emailed to you, um, depending on your laws and stuff, you may turn this off or on depending on what you want. And then advanced display settings. It's, do you want to show the form title? I usually do, and I just get rid of contact me and leave it at contact or contact us. And then you can have calculations, etc. How these guys work is this part is free. Um, so I can preview this. That's what it looks like. Um, if you want additional features like taking money or multi-page forms, etc., that's where it costs money, and I do think it's worth it if that's what you need. So go ahead and close this. All right, so we now have our contact us form, and now we're gonna create our contact us page. Uh, we have been going to new and then page. Um, you can also go to pages, add new, or click add new here. So we're gonna title it contact us. We're gonna go to Beaver Builder. We're gonna create a heading. We're gonna put our nap in, our name, address, and phone number with a text. So let's put it right under this. So nap here, so let's say. So there it is there. I'll hit save. I'm actually gonna do plus again and go to rows. And what I usually do is I put the nap on one side and I put social media icons on the other. So to do so, I'll go to modules and I'll go to icon group. In the past we've done icon, now we're gonna do icon group. We're gonna put in a group here. So we'll go to edit icon, select icon, start typing Facebook. So there's the F. Put the link in facebook.com slash press avenue. 
and I always click new window because I want it to open in a new window. I'll hit save, move this over here, and there's the F there. Then I usually duplicate this, and then I just fill it out for the additional services. So I go to edit icon, replace, type Twitter. There it is. I'll just change the link and hit save. Edit icon three, replace Instagram. There it is. Hit save, edit icon, replace YouTube. Save. So they're all four icons. You can have more, of course, you have as many as you want. They have the option to style it in per icon. So Facebook can be blue and YouTube can be red, but I like to style them all together. So I hit save and I go to style. This changes the size so I can make them a lot bigger. This changes the spacing, the alignment. I can change the color here. You can change it to match your brand. It can be something totally different, completely up to you. Again, the hover color can be different. You can do a background color, so if it's on a dark background, it can look like a button, similar to up here. And then you can have gradients, etc. So hit save. And then I go to plus, modules, text editor. I say connect with us or friend with, connect with us or friend us, etc. Go to advanced, change the padding, go to style, make this bigger. And I still want it closer, so I'm going to go back to the icons, go to advanced, and change this top margin to kind of pull that stuff in. So you can see that there. There's our nap, and now we're going to add our contact form. So all the modules here that we've talked about, only a few of the basics so far, but there's a lot you can use, and we'll have more videos on different things for this. But under the standard modules, we have something called WordPress widgets, and in here is where we find our Ninja Forms widget. Go ahead and drag that under the nap here, and I'll select Contact Us, display the title, and save. And now we have, it's gonna load. It's loading and then not loading. Save. I'll go to Done, Publish. And then it's repeating Contact Us, which is interesting. So maybe I don't want to, oh, in the settings it says, display the title and I probably double. So I'll click this, save, done, refresh. And you can see it's not working that well with Beaver Builder. And um, if I refresh, it does come back and it is there. And I will make a note that WordPress 5.0 has stated that widgets are going away. So all of this will be cleaned up in the future. Um, I do want to break there, so I'm going to go to Beaver Builder again, plus, and I'm going to go to Separator. And you can see that separation line. I'm going to change it to our blue color and hit Save, Done, Publish. And that's it. All right, and here's the final site. If you have any questions about any part of this video, please let us know in the comments below. Additionally, if it was helpful in any way, give it a thumbs up. And lastly, on our channel at the very top, if you click the red subscribe button, it'll help support this channel and you'll see more great videos just like this one. Thanks again for watching. Hey, thanks again. My name is John with Press Avenue. Go ahead and hit that circle right below me here and you can subscribe to this channel and click the little bell and it'll notify you of new stuff. You can click the square right next to it to go to Press Avenue directly without having to type anything. And over here on the right, we have a playlist just for you and the most recent upload. Thanks.